Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Brews and Barbecue. Guys, I know it's been a minute since we've put out a video. I hope you and your families have been staying safe through this whole COVID pandemic. I know me and my family have been struggling trying to find things to do. So there's been a whole lot of YouTube, but not a whole lot of filming. But I'm here to assure you guys we're gonna be doing a whole lot more filming going forward. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the old subscribers, everybody that's reached out to me to make sure I'm okay. And I appreciate all of the new subscribers that have come to the channel. You've stopped and subscribed at the right channel if you want to learn how to cook delicious foods and make it super easy for you to do it. So today on this video, we're going to be making none other than tamales. With the holiday season coming up, there's no better thing to cook for your family and have plentiful amounts for everybody to try. So today on this video, we're gonna teach you the easiest way, the easiest steps to make tamales in your home and impress your family. So with that being said, let's jump right into the video and teach you guys how to make these tamales so you guys can be the next greatest thing at your next party. Let's go. The first thing we're gonna do, which is one of the most critical steps in the cooking process, is soaking our corn husks. You better start this right at the beginning because you want them to be soft and foldable for when you start applying your masa. It's gonna be crucial to have a nice deep bowl so that you can fit as much water as possible in here and be able to completely soak all of your leaves. You wanna get a good, good soak on these guys. You wanna make sure they're completely submerged. One thing we do to help keep them submerged is put a bowl on top. The next part we're gonna to get to work on is slicing our tomatoes. We wanna make sure we quarter these guys out so when they start cooking, they release all those juices so that we don't have to add any water to the pot and we're going to repeat this process with five large tomatoes you can also use roma tomatoes but you got to make sure to use a few more and once you're done quartering out your tomatoes you want to make sure to throw them into the pot to make room on your cutting board for the next step the next step is going to be chopping one whole onion in half Once you have your onion halves, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you cut each end of the onion. Those parts are gonna be no good for this cook. Once you've done that, we're gonna start quartering each half of the onion as well to really release those aromas and flavors. Once you're done quartering those onions, you know the drill clear the workspace so we can start working on our garlic. Give the garlic a nice little smash so that you can peel the skin and start chopping the garlic. For today's cook, we're gonna use about five to six teeth of garlic. You can do it to your liking. Some people don't like as much garlic, but here in this family, like I've said before, we don't like vampires, we like our garlic. Next, we're gonna be prepping our chili pepper. The chili pepper that we're gonna be using for this cook are chile guajillo. You can find them in just about every single supermarket. You can most definitely find them at Walmart. Just try to look for the Mexican aisle and they're in green packages. Now, part of the trick is trying to get most of the seeds out of the chili pepper, but we're gonna be straining this so it's not crucial that you get every single seed. And when adding your chili peppers to the pot, make sure you tear them up a little bit so they can mix with the flavors of the onion, the garlic, and the tomatoes. Now the next pepper we're gonna be working with is chile de arbol. These guys can get pretty spicy. We're gonna use about 10 for this cook. You guys can use a little bit less and a good rule of thumb, if you've used too much chile, just be sure to add a little bit of sugar to your sauce to dim it out. Now that we got all of our peppers, tomatoes, and garlic, we're gonna wanna get them a nice little mix and we're gonna add some black peppercorns. We're gonna add about a teaspoon of black peppercorns. Now these are whole peppercorns. If all you have is ground pepper, you can use that as well. We're also gonna toss in two bay leaves. And we're also gonna do not one, but two pinches of ground cumin. And just as a reminder, and for the newcomers to the channel, all the ingredients and exact amounts are always linked in the description down below. 
Now that we have most of the ingredients for a sauce, we're gonna throw it on a medium heat. The other thing we're gonna be adding is one chicken bouillon cube. Now being that we're not putting any water in our pot, you wanna make sure you break down the cube and sprinkle it all over the pot. And last but not least, we're gonna add just a smidge of kosher salt. Another critical component of the tamales is the rendered down fat. You can use bacon grease for this and as a good substitute you can use Crisco, olive oil or canola oil. Now a good thing to note is if you do use different kinds of oil or grease it does change the flavor profile. We just want to get it over some low heat to melt it down because we're going to be using this for our dough. Now this next part is our masa. We actually bought this from the store pre-made. You can find this in just about any Mexican market you visit. If for some reason you can't find it, just find the maize, add your water to it, and just keep kneading it like you would flour until you get the right texture. Now that we've added our grease, you wanna make sure you work it in. It seems like you may have added a lot. We added about half the pot's worth, but you're just gonna work it and knead it into the masa and it's gonna absorb it all, I promise. Now a good way to work this in is dig your hand underneath, flip the dough from the bottom to the top and continue to knead it just like that. Now just as a reminder, you're not going to need the entire thing of grease. You're definitely going to have some left over. You just want to get a nice brown color to the masa. Make sure you add it as you go and play it by ear. Take a look at your masa. If it starts getting a little too watery, you can just add a little bit more of that masa flour. The next thing we're going to add is a little bit of baking powder. We're going to do about a teaspoon and a half. The baking powder is a critical component. It makes it so that the masa firms up while it's steaming and cooking. Now make sure you really mix that baking powder in. You really want it to get incorporated in the dough. The next thing we're going to work on is our filler. Normally you'd cook some chicken or even pork. But for the sake of saving time, because we started a little bit later, we got some pre-cooked chickens from the store, and we're simply going to take the meat off every single bone and shred it up. Now, if you guys want to see us do a video on making it fresh from the get, drop a like and let us know down in the comment section below. If you're wanting to do that on your own before I put out a video on how, you can simply boil a little bit of chicken or even grill it and just make it so that it's shreddable make sure it stays nice and moist because the rest of it is going to cook through in the tamales now for this cook we did do three rotisserie chickens just for the sake of saving time for the video i only filmed one and just like that our sauce is ready to be blended it smells amazing and as you can see there's a good amount of moisture content that came out from all of those vegetables now as a friendly reminder although we didn't film the stirring of our salsa vegetables you want to make sure you continuously stir them and now the last thing is to add some kosher salt once you've added your kosher salt, apply your lid to your blender and start blending. You wanna blend this for a good amount of time. Make sure the sauce is nice and fine. And again, like I said, if it's a little too spicy, there's nothing a little bit of sugar can't fix. Add a little bit more salt to counteract the sugar and your sauce should be ready to go. Now when trying to figure out if you've blended it enough, we're looking for this consistency. A nice thick consistency, but not too thick where it doesn't run off the spoon. The next thing we're gonna do is add our chicken to a pot and start adding our salsa. You wanna do this on a low heat. You're not trying to cook the chicken more, nor the salsa. You're just trying to get it nice and warm and mix it into the chicken. Now, one of the things you don't wanna do is pour all your salsa into the pot. You wanna save some of that for our dough. We're gonna add some of that flavoring into the dough and it's amazing, I promise you guys.
Now, as promised, we're gonna add some of the sauce to our dough. Now, you're gonna wanna repeat the process that you did for when you were mixing in the grease. You wanna just start from the bottom to the top and continue to mix. We're also gonna add just a pinch of kosher salt. Now, once you're done, the consistency of your dough should be something like this. Might look a little chunky, but it should fall right off your hand. Now the last step is to chill your dough for about 10 minutes or so. Once your dough is chilled, you're going to want to pull out your leaf from the ones that we've had soaking. And you want to choose a nice wide leaf. If too thin, you're not going to be able to fold it over as well. Add about a spoonful and a half to your leaf. You want to spread it to just below the lip of that leaf and you want it to be about a quarter inch thick. Now another tip, you want to get just a nice little rectangle on there. You don't want to go too far down on the leaf because you're going to fold over a portion of that leaf once you get it folded up. The next thing you're going to do is spoon some of your filling right in the center. You want to keep it as flat as possible. If you overload it, they're not going to close properly. Now the folding can be a little tricky, but you want to fold one side and try to have your dough touch the other side. What you do from there is just fully roll it, flip it over, and fold the bottom to the top. Now if your tamale didn't fully seal on the top, no worries, you might see a little bit of meat protruding. All you have to do is pinch off the top and you're ready to go. With the amount of meat and dough we chose to do, it's going to make about three to four dozen tamales. The next thing you need is a pot with one of these grates in the bottom. The thing you're going to want to do with this pot is fill it just to that line with water. Make sure you put your grate back in and you want to start assembling your tamales in a circle pattern around the outside of the pot first. And from there repeat the process until you hit the center of the pot. Now, if you guys are wondering where you can get this pot, I actually got this pot at Walmart. It was fairly inexpensive and they're very, very handy for a bunch of different Mexican dishes. And lastly, once you get to the center, you want to make sure you make enough room for them. You don't want to crush the other tamales, so just lay them in there gently. Now with our leftover leaves, we're going to lay them over the top to try to retain the heat from the steam. Try your best to cover as much of the tamales that you can, but if you don't have enough leaves to, that's okay. Now that we got them all covered up, it's time to place our lid and let these guys steam on medium heat for two and a half to three hours. All right guys, the moment we've all been waiting for. These have been cooking for, I want to say, two and a half, almost three hours. And we've been making them all day long. Uh, so we're going to go in for the taste test and see how it goes. I'll let my brother go first, since he did the majority of the work with these guys. Delicious. That's good? God. AJ, get in on that. It's not even spicy. Oh, I'm getting a lot of good reactions. Oh, baby. Hold on. And you oh. can't taste the oil stream. So, we actually ended up making, ooh, ooh, sliding right off. Making a little bit of salsa for it. Oh. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of videos on different salsas. If, if you guys want to see strictly on a salsa video, let me know and we'll we'll do a few. Well, let's go. Mm. Sorry, I can't stop. Oh, no. Baby. You got my reaction. It's hot, but. Oh man, that's, the masa stay nice and moist. It's not dry. A lot of the times when you get some of these tamales, you bite into them and it's like biting into, I mean, a dry tortilla. So, stay nice and moist. You want to make sure you add. Uh, you want to make sure you add the manteca, the lard. Uh, you want to make sure you add the sauce into the uh, actual maize, the corn, and yeah. Mm. But anyway, guys, we're gonna get to much, and we got a lot of hungry kids, a lot of hungry, angry wives. Uh, so, without further ado, we'll catch you guys on the next episode of Bruce and Barbecue. We'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.